Well, okay then. I just want you to realise what you're getting yourself into. I mean, yeah, you could get lucky and find them after only two Whimsydale visits, but you know, chances are that you're going to spend 15 days straight farming 12 hours a day in a group with three other people, and you won't see a single rainbow goblin in like two hours. Or, I mean, you could also try hunting solo, but then you're only going to see one RPG every three hours, and you'll have visited Whimsydale over 180 times, and you've never seen Princess Lillian. I mean, what the f***? Look, the wings are pretty. I'll give you that. And they're one of, if not the rarest, collectible in the game. And I mean, it's not like we have Diablo 4 to play instead, right? Okay, okay, okay. So, perhaps farming the cosmic wings is an okay hobby to get yourself into. Look, hobby isn't really the right term here, is it? I mean, yeah, you'll do it regularly, in your leisure time. And it might even be quite pleasurable to begin with. The excitement of each, ha ha, as you round the bend on Pandemonium Fortress Level 2, knowing that there's not one but two chances of seeing that glorious rainbow portal. Only you're greeted by first a smug treasure goblin and then a mocking gelatinous sire who has the audacity to sarcastically go, ha ha, after you've backtracked through half the map trying to find him. No, no, I, I don't believe hobby is the right word for the experience you're about to embark on. Mayhaps torment and self-immolation is more appropriate. Okay, if I haven't turned you off by now, it, you must be in it for real. So let's talk all things Cosmic Wings. The Cosmic Wings are a guaranteed drop from a unique rare unicorn found only in Whimsydale. In order to access Whimsydale, you need to find and kill a rainbow goblin who will open a portal to the dale. Once inside, find Princess Lillian and rejoice! Well, that's the theory at least. In reality, you'll kill literally thousands of goblins while hunting for Whimsydale portals and you'll wonder why you wanted the wings in the first place. Rainbow goblins have anywhere from a 1-5% to chance of spawning, but Blizzard hasn't confirmed these numbers, so we're just going off reports from the player base. In order to maximise our RBGs, we need to find as many goblins per hour as humanly possible. If you're encountering goblins of any type, you're doing the right thing. Unfortunately, RNGesus doesn't stop there because even after you've managed to find a Whimsydale portal, Princess Lillian has about a 1% chance of spawning. But again, this is based on player reports. There's a handful of builds that are suitable for goblin hunting, Dashing Strike Monk is by far the best. It requires machine levels of concentration to be consistently efficient with, but if you're cybernetically enhanced and looking to maximize your chances at thwarting RNGs, it's definitely the way to go. An alternative build, and the one I personally prefer, is the Angry Chicken Witch Doctor. It's still quite zippy, but it allows you to distract yourself by watching a movie at the same time. And that's great for keeping yourself both motivated and sane. I know I keep harping on about this, but almost every person who has ever tried getting the Cosmic Wings in, has, has been in the Dale hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. So patience and persistence is really not so much key here as it is a downright necessity. Between the Monk and the Witch Doctor, the former will take more time to set up, just due to the number of core pieces that you need to make the build work. It revolves around endlessly spamming dashing strikes, so you'll need some raiment of a thousand storms pieces. The other pieces are Pride's Fall from Act 3 Bounty Caches, Syndicote, Holy Beacon, the crafted Reaper's Wraps, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, and the two fist weapons, Fleshrake and Vengeful Wind. 
You can get away with not having some of the pieces, but you'll more often find yourself spiritless or with your dash down, so it's worth grabbing them all up front. I mean, you're going to be farming forever anyway, so what's a few more minutes setting up, right? Now once you have those pieces, head over to the Mystic and re-roll reduced resource cost onto everything you can. Now in addition to the gear you're wearing, you'll want to find a few extra pieces for the cube and for your follower. In the cube you need Burst of Wrath, which is found in Act 3 Bounty Caches, Kayashira's Soul, and Ring of the Royal Grandeur from Act 1 Bounties. Remember that Act 4 bounties can drop rewards from any acts, but since its loot table is so huge, it's probably not worth farming. For your follower, you want to take either the Templar or the Enchantress. You'll need homing pads, gold skin, and avarice band. Because these items emanate, you'll move faster and teleport without interruption. Between the two, the Templar is useful for resource cost reduction, and the Enchantress for reducing your cooldowns. Lastly, both the Monk and Witch Doctor use the same legendary gems, so grab yourself a Wreath of Lightning, Gogok of Swiftness, and Boon of the Hoarder. Righto, on the Witch Doctor side of things, it's far easier to get started. The only mandatory pieces you need to wear are the two weapons that make up the Manajuma's Way set. Other than that, if you happen to come across a Krelm's Buff Belt and Rochelle's Ring of Larceny, those are nice for adding to your movement speed. Once you have those, drop by the Mystic and reroll increased movement speed onto whatever you can. For the cube, pop in Thing of the Deep, Hexing Pants of Mr. Yan, and optionally, Ring of the Royal Grandeur. With the Witch Doctor, I've found the Enchantress to be slightly more useful since she rocks cooldown reduction. I've never come close to having any mana issues, but I do occasionally fat finger Hex, so it's nice for recovering from that. If you decide to go with a Monk, Here's the Dashing Strike build you'll want. And the Angry Chicken one, if you go with a Witch Doctor. There are numerous maps in each act that can spawn gobbies, but the trick is finding ones that are quick and easy to clear while appearing to net your regular stream of spawns. Now I say appearing to because for every person claiming Ancient Waterways has the best spawn rate of any map, there's someone else swearing by the Royal Crypts. Basically, try out a few combinations and design a route that works best for you. You want one that takes you about six and a half, seven minutes to complete. If you're not sure where to start, I've linked in the description a written guide I wrote that has a bunch of suggested routes. That guide also has the information covered in this video, along with some extra tips and tricks I've learnt during my farming. When it comes to creating your own hunting route, it pays to keep in mind that some maps are better suited to a monk than a witch doctor, and vice versa. It depends on your playstyle, but generally speaking, monks do well with large open spaces where they can really let rip and fly across the map, and Witch Doctors are useful for tight, winding catwalks that feature invisible walls you can't dash through. Those are more commonly found in the Act 5 Pandemonium Fortress levels. Righto, you've got your gear, you've decked out your follower, and you've planned your route. The coffee's on, and your personally curated epic road trip mixtape is locked and loaded. The house is spotless, the dog's been fed, the kids are down for the night, and you've even borrowed sugar from your neighbour. It's time to hunt. Okay, so here's where things get technical. It's fine to zip around your chosen maps, exploring every nook and cranny, leaving no stone unturned, but we're here to maximise our RBGs. We need to raise that juicy, juicy gobs per hour so we can see the wings before Diablo 4 comes out, right? 
Right. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, and I apologise to those who are hard of hearing, but the key here is sound. I'm not just talking about your audio settings. Oh no, my friend, we're talking the bleep sweeps and creeps of radar. The what? The what? And the what? You know, the bleeps. <laughs> the sweeps. <laughs> and the creeps. <laughs> Mate, Space Balls was such a good movie. Anyway, what you might have already realised is that sound travels faster than light in the world of Diablo 3. You can hear a goblin laughing at you well before it pops up on your screen. So armed with this knowledge, we don't need to explore every nook and cranny. All we need to do is focus on opening up effectively 50% of the map and the audible range will hopefully take care of the rest. Now before I explain this graphic, this all comes with a caveat. There are instances where a goblin won't make any sound at all. It could be an audio glitch, there might be another monster noise that overlaps a laugh, or perhaps the goblin was stunned in the silence because your transmog is so stunning. Look, whatever the reason, if you think you might have missed something, it's okay to go back and check. Trust me, you'll sleep better. So, what are we looking at here? The orange circle is the limit of our visual range. As you're running or dashing through an area, this circle effectively paints the minimap for you, enabling you to see where you've been and slightly ahead to where you're going. However, the green circle is the range at which we can hear the goblins when they laugh. If they're inside that circle, we will hear them. So as you're moving around the maps and become more familiar with where the borders are, you'll be able to start clearing more efficiently. Adjust your sound settings to make goblins easier to hear. Mute the voice and ambient channels and disable music. Crank up the effects volume and set the master volume to taste. You'll still hear other monster sounds, but the goblin laughs will come through crystal clear. Game difficulty doesn't affect goblin spawns, so this means you can farm on normal and have an equal chance at RPGs as someone hunting on Torment 16. It's also the same deal between seasonal and non-seasonal characters, so farm your gear once and just hunt on a non-seasonal character. RPGs can't spawn in rifts or from bandit shrines, so don't bother farming those. Furthermore, Princess Lillian can't spawn in Whimsy Shire, which you can access with a staff of herding. In the Shire, you have the chance of killing Sir William, who drops the rainbow portrait. As defined by the Collins Dictionary, People who suffer from RSI have pain in their hands and arms as a result of repeating similar movements over a long period of time. Diablo 3 is already a pretty clicky game, but we kick that up a notch with the dash spam monk. So if you value your wrist at all, I'd highly recommend setting up a mouse or keyboard macro. Program it to cast dashing strike at reasonable intervals, say once or maybe twice a second, and your future self will thank you. The community function in D3 is home to a number of farming groups, some more active than others, where you can group with other people and greatly increase your goblins per hour. Try keywords like cosmic wings or rainbow and see who you meet. Just be wary of leeches who pretend to be running roots, but they're actually just letting you do all the work. Oh, and also make sure everyone knows not to enter Whimsydale until the entire group is at the portal. And this is because Lillian can actually spawn right at the entrance to the Dale, and if someone ports in and accidentally kills her, no one else in the group will get the wings. And that makes for some real bad karma.
Farming the cosmic wings is not for the faint of heart. I myself have been to Whimsydale on 183 separate occasions at the time of recording this video, and I still haven't come across Lillian. And if you think that's unlucky, other players have killed more than 800 RBGs before they finally got lucky. And that's really the key takeaway here. They got lucky. There's really no trick to getting the wings. There's no secret map or hidden cow level that will save you hours upon hours of banging your monk head against numerous walls. 